What is going on in crew? My name is Andrew. Welcome back to a brand new exciting video today I've got an exciting video for you guys because we are coming back with the tutorials I've been on my two-month hiatus working on my anyone can create video if you guys haven't seen it yet I'll link it down below, but it's time It's time to get back on that grind to start making some tutorials again And I'm excited because we're starting off with a bang. I think of all the tutorials I've made It's definitely one of the more beneficial. Maybe that's not the right word But like I guess more like it's one of the more eye-opening tutorials I might have done or am doing currently. Oh, that was confusing. Pretty much in this video, I just wanna shed some light on a tool, a plugin for After Effects. Force Effects makes tons of different products. They're all super, super high quality. And if you guys are trying to take editing seriously and take your editing to the next level, I cannot recommend Force Effects more highly. That being said, guys, I feel like I've chatted along quite enough, so we're gonna hop on the computer and start talking about this effect. All right, everybody, so I'm on the computer now inside of Adobe Premiere Pro, and I've got two different clips right here. So the first clip I have is the shot of my brother, looking out at the water, at the horizon of the sunrise. And the important thing to notice about this clip is that there's a definable foreground, meaning that it's pretty obvious what we're gonna mask out and replace the background with. I'm gonna cut out this wall right here, cut out his body, and that's pretty much it. So you just wanna have a clip that has a clearly defined foreground. The other clip that I have is this time-lapse I got of a city, and what it is is a day to night time-lapse. So it starts off in the day around golden hour, and then all the way at the end here, you can see it's pitch black, it's nighttime. So you just need two different clips, something like that. And if you guys want to download this footage to follow along, I'm going to have a Google Drive link in the description below so you can download both of these clips there and follow along. That being said, guys, real quick, actually, I'm going to get rid of that audio. I'm going to select these two different clips, right click, and hit replace with After Effects composition. All right, so cool. Now we're inside of After Effects. The first thing I'm going to do is just right click on this first clip, hit pre compose, and move all attributes into new composition. And I'm going to name this foreground. Hit OK, and I always just like to trim off the edges of these pre-comps just like that. Now the first thing that we need to do is track or mask out this foreground, his body and these bars right here. And this is when the power of Mocha really comes into play. You could try to do this manually with a mask like this and just track along, but that is such a big pain. It just does not work that effectively at all, and I would not recommend that to anybody. What we're going to use is Boris FX's Mocha Pro. Now if you guys don't have Mocha Pro, that's totally fine. Every copy of After Effects comes with Mocha AE, which is a very powerful version of Mocha. So if you guys don't have Mocha Pro, then go ahead and just pull up Mocha AE and you can follow along with that. Now to launch Mocha, it's really quite simple. There's this big Mocha button and you're just going to select that and that's going to launch Mocha Pro plugin 2019. And here we are, we are inside of Mocha. All right, so at this point, you might be freaking out just a little bit. It does look a little bit complicated. It's a little bit intimidating, but trust me, it's not that bad. And there's really only a few tools you have to learn for day to day use. So just basics of Mocha right here. The first thing you need to know is when you hold down Z on your keyboard, it brings up your zoom in and zoom out tool, just like that. And then if you wanna move around the screen, you hold down X, the button right next to Z, and you can move around the screen. And then the other tool that we really are gonna use a lot is this X spline tool. Essentially just think of this as a pen tool inside of After Effects or Photoshop. So we're gonna do some ragdoll rotoscoping here, meaning we're gonna break down this rotoscope into a few different parts. What a lot of people do in the beginning when they're just starting off doing any kind of rotoscoping is they try to mask out everything at once. They would try to mask out the bars, the body, the head, everything like that all at once and just knock it out with one track. Now that's a bad idea for a lot of reasons, but the main reason is because it's just difficult to get accurate tracks that way. And it's difficult to check if you have an accurate track. If you have a massive mask with hundreds of track points, it's difficult just to keep an eye on all of those individual track points. So it's best to use a method called ragdoll rotoscoping where you break it down into different parts. The first part I'm going to track is around this upper body. So I'm just going to go all the way around. It doesn't have to be perfect, but just try to get it as accurate as you can. We'll deal with the head and the neck later. So we're just doing the body right now. Make sure you get these little details like this strap. Cool, there we go. And then just to finish off the mask, you just right click and that closes it off. So now just brace yourselves guys, cause this is gonna blow your mind. Mocha is such a powerful planar tracking tool. So we're gonna track this and I bet you we're gonna have to do barely any kind of keyframing. Uh, Mocha is gonna take care of pretty much all the work for us. So to track this mask, you go down to where it says track, go all the way over to the right and that's gonna start tracking forward. This is only a two second clip, so it shouldn't take that long. Cool, there we have it guys, that is the track. Do you 
you see how smooth that is, how accurate it is. There are a ton of different track points going on right here. There's a lot of similar colors in the screen, but because of how powerful this tool is, look how accurate that track is. It's amazing. Now, even though this is an extremely powerful tool, it's not perfect. So you definitely want to check your work to make sure that it is accurate. So to make that easier, Mocha provided this really cool quick stabilize mode. And what that does is it sort of stabilizes the whole image, sort of like warp stabilizes the whole image so that you can better just watch your rotoscope and make sure that it's accurate. So if we select this little hand right here, that puts it in the quick stabilize mode. And now when we play through, we can watch it and stabilize. And you can see that those track points aren't moving at all. It's a solid mask. So we don't have to worry about that. So I'm going to go over to this layers tab right here. And I'm just going to name this body. And then it's important to uncheck this gear icon because if you leave that on, it's going to keep retracking that mask every time we do future tracks and it's going to make the tracking process in the future take a lot longer. So just make sure you uncheck that gear icon. So real quick, I'm going to go ahead and do the head right here. Same thing. Grab the X tool, draw a quick mask around and remember Z to zoom in and then X to use the hand tool. And then once we're done, just right click. And now you guys know what we need to do. Go over to the track, go all the way to the right and start tracking forward. Because there's not as many track points, this isn't taking long at all. It's breezing right through this. Cool, and there we go. Now we've got this track. So we still got the quick stabilize mode on. Let's just check this mask, see how accurate it is. And it's looking pretty good. There's just a couple of quick adjustments we need to make. This is slid over a little bit to the left. So we're gonna select all those points and just slightly move them over to the left. All right, so that's looking pretty solid. I think we're good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and name that head. Now I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing we just did for these two bars right here and this bottom base right there. I'm not going to show you the same thing over and over again, so I'll catch you guys a few minutes from now when I finish up doing these tracks. All right, there you go guys. Now you can see I've successfully tracked all of these different masks. If we play through, you can see it follows along quite nicely. Now what we have to do is take all these masks and import them into After Effects. So what we're going to do is just select one of these layers. We'll just select the body, go over to Export Data export shape data select that make sure the format is mocha shape data for ae and then select all visible layers we'll copy that to the clipboard close mocha hit save and now that we're back inside of after effects we're going to create a new solid layer so we're going to go up to layer new solid we're going to name this matte it doesn't matter what color it is green is fine and then we're going to go over to edit and then paste mocha mask now you can see we've got this nice green matte layer and now we obviously want to get rid of this green so all we have to do is go over to the foreground layer the track matte if you don't see the track matte hit this toggle switches and modes and change it from none to alpha matte and there we go guys now we've got this nice clean track of the foreground so now we're going to grab this time lapse i'm going to rename this layer time lapse what I'm gonna do is just let it play through a bit to about a second in. This clip is two seconds long, so I want the first half to be during day and then the immediately at the second half for it to be night. So I'm gonna go to a second in, which is right there, split the clip, and then drag this to the end somewhere about right there. And you can get pretty creative with it too. You can add some glitch effects and stuff like that, whatever you wanna do. What I'm gonna do just for the purpose of this tutorial is drag this out a bit and I'm gonna add a luma key effect. I'm gonna go to the beginning somewhere about right there add a keyframe, drag it all the way to 255, go into a few frames, drag it all the way down to zero, and then make sure I drag this underlying clip below it. So now when you play it through, you can see you've got this cool luma fade on. All right, so we're getting pretty close to being done. Now the main thing we have to do is just color matching. Make the foreground match the background. I'm just gonna use the Lumetri color, and I'm gonna add that to my foreground layer. I'm gonna go to the basic correction, and I'm just gonna make the temperature a little bit more warm something like that, sort of just to match the orange. I'll go down to the color wheels. I'm just gonna pump some more orange into the mid-tones. In the highlights, there's a little bit of that sort of dark blue, so I'll put some blue in there somewhere. And then I would just add a little bit of blue into the shadows, just a bit. We need a little bit more orange. You could definitely take more time with that, but I think that works for now. And now what we're gonna do is just add a quick brightness and contrast effect. Keyframe the brightness and contrast at the beginning. Add two keyframes right when the luma fade begins. Go to the end of the luma fade. And then here what we're gonna do is just darken everything. Darken it a lot, because if you think about it, it's gonna be pretty dark. Add some contrast in. And there you go, that looks pretty solid. And this is looking perfect. There's just one last thing that's just bugging me, which is this little strip right here where the mask went off a bit. To fix this, we just need to go into Mocha and just adjust something real quick. So I'm gonna head back into Mocha. It's the left pole. I know that's right here. And I'm just gonna zoom in, and yeah, you can see right there, it's just going off a little bit. Just gonna pull that in, just adjust this mask a little bit, just try to clean it up. And yeah, that looks pretty good. So now what we can do is just select this one layer, 
export shape data make sure it's just the selected layer not all visible layers just a selected layer copy to clipboard and we're going to delete the left pull mask that's currently there and we're just going to edit paste mocha mask and put our new mask in and now hopefully and there you go now you can see we've got that all fixed up it's looking a lot cleaner and everything looks pretty good all right so now we have one last thing to do and all that is is to track this background time lapse to the actual background that was a part of this foreground and it's really easy and to do this we're just gonna head back into mocha and what makes this background so difficult to track for most trackers is that it's blurred out this was shot on a pretty fast aperture so the background is quite blurry and that poses a real challenge for a lot of different trackers but because mocha is a planar tracker it can take care of this like nothing so we're gonna grab this x-spline tool and just draw a quick mask around the point that you want to track go ahead and track through and there we go it just finished tracking through and you can see it's holding on to that really nicely honestly there's no perceivable move or shift in the track at all and the way we're going to export this is instead of going to shape data we're going to hit export tracking data now after effects corner pin is what you would use if you're like replacing a screen or something like that but all we want here is the transform data we want the position the scale and the rotation so we'll select that Copy it to the clipboard. And now we're gonna just go to layer, new, null object, and we'll hit Control V or Command V on Mac and just paste all of that tracking data. And now we'll select these two time-lapse layers, grab these pick whips right here, and just drag them up and drop them on the null one. And now you can see there's not much movement, but there's gonna be a subtle movement in the background and it's just gonna really wrap these two layers together. It's subtle, it's hard to notice if you're not looking for it, but it really does make a big difference. And all right guys, so I just ram previewed it and we can watch our work. And there you have it guys, that is it. That is how to do this super cool background transformation effect. It's not that difficult if you film the clip with the effect in mind and it's super easy to do if you have access to Mocha AE or Mocha Pro. If you guys wanna purchase Mocha Pro, I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you guys to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something new. I'm really excited to be back doing tutorials and everything like that. Let me know in the comments down below what kind of tutorials you guys wanna see in the future. Also guys, one of my goals for 2019 was to really improve my photography and the way I'm sort of showcasing my journey in photography is on my Instagram so go ahead and follow me on Instagram at Andrew J M E S there will be a link for that in the description below as well thank you guys so much for watching this video I really do hope you guys enjoyed it be sure to get outside film a video make a difference and I'll see you guys in the next one peace